quilts can be real satisfying. And if you haven't ever done that, I'm going to show you an easy way to design some simple, traditional type quilts. Don't worry about the word design. A design is simply a plan. You do something by design rather than by accident, and it's the same way with making quilts. You have a plan for what you're going to do. These are the supplies I use for my extremely low-tech designing. I use graph paper, pencil and ruler, calculator so I don't make a silly math mistake, especially on camera, and a whole bunch of fabric, which you probably have a lot of fabric at your house. We're going to design with little nine patches. I've been in a lot of nine patch exchanges and I have about a jillion of these at my house. So I'm always glad to come up with new designs for using these little nine patches. These guys are, are three inches finished, which means when the seams are sewn all the way around it in a quilt, it will be three inches. Right now it measures three and a half inches because there's a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Once again, the finished size this very center piece is the only piece that's a finished size in this block so far because it's the only one that has the seams all sewn all the way around it. I know that sounds really basic, but those kinds of uh, things will be really helpful as we continue with this. One of the simplest designs to make with nine patches is the double nine patch block. And that's what I have right here. Um, a big nine patch made with little nine patches going through it too. Because these nine patches, little nine patches, were three and a half inches cut, the square will be three and a half inches cut also. Three inches finished, three and a half inches cut. That's the simplest block on earth, just about, but you can do some things to it to jazz it up. One of the things you might do is to change this little center, this big block right here. And I've drawn in my book, I, I like to draw in a book like this so I can keep track of those designs, I don't lose them with papers floating around. So to embellish or to change this little piece right here, I could add triangle corners to it. And once again, I'm going to measure it just so you'll see how you would do this if you were working with a more complex piece. The square needs to be three inches finished. I'm drawing a finished size. And the little triangles I wanted to meet in the middle, so that means the side of the triangle is one and a half inches. I'm going to assemble this with a stitch and flip method, which means I add one half inch to that triangle if I were cutting a square. So this is how that piece can look. This is how the stitch and flip works. You just mark a diagonal line on the small square, align it with the larger piece, whether it's a square or a rectangle. You sew from corner to corner. I usually like to mark that so I can get to the corner, okay? And you open it up and press it and you're gonna go back and trim away those underneath pieces. Well, this little simple piece can really make a big difference in how the simple double nine patch comes together. Just adding that, and I've got a little star. I can flip them around, and I've got a different kind of a shape. Don't know what you call this, but that's a different kind of a shape. I can add things to the corner and change them, put a different center in the middle, and that gives me a completely different block too. Um, maybe I want to put just plain fabrics in the corner. This is, once again, a three and a half inch square. Cut three and a half inches so it finishes three inches. And that's how that would look. Switch out the corners, change these again. Every time you make a little change, you've got a different block going. So your plan may change as you go along when you see that you like something a little bit better. These corners also can be something different. If I decided I wanted to have, instead of a plain square for the corner, I want two triangles. The math for that is 
you cut, you add 7 eighths of an inch to the finished size of that square. So the finished size of the square is 3 inches. I'm going to cut a square 3 and 7 eighths of an inch, slice it diagonally, sew it together with another one, and then I've got this half square triangle. Get rid of that. And this, once again, completely changes the look of the block. Um, turn them around the other way. That's different too. This all is extremely simple way to come up with designs. Low tech, low math. Oh, let's switch these around, see what happens if I do that too. Every little change can make a huge difference in the way that your block looks. So that's one of the many blocks that can be made from the lowly little nine patch. I'll get rid of those. I think that was all I was going to do with this particular one. So let's try something different. Here's a different nine patch, just because you probably got tired of looking at those colors. I know I did. And maybe I would like something different, like I didn't draw it in here. Oh well, that's all right. Um, a piece like this. This is a little hourglass piece. The math for this, once again, I want it to finish three inches finished. So I'm going to cut a square an inch and a quarter larger than that. So I'll cut a square four and a quarter inches, slice it diagonally twice to get quarter square triangles. That puts a straight of grain on this outer edge to keep this piece stable. So those quarter square triangles back together. And here's what happens with four of those. You end up with this little star. And now I have corners to fill. What do I want to do with them? I can put nine patches in there. I could just put a plain piece of fabric in there. That works. And of course you know that's a three and a half inch square cut three and a half inches. I should say cut or finished each time I say something so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe these half square triangles from the previous one might work in there. Maybe the colors aren't the greatest, but you will get the idea of, of putting in the half square triangles in the corners. This is what I know keeps me running to the fabric store, is finding new new fabrics and new shapes that go with fabrics and quilts that I already have. Rotate those and you once again have something different. At home I have a design wall. It's kind of like this surface. It's um, insulation board that I buy at the home um, improvement store and then I wrapped batting around it and I'm lucky enough to be able to staple it or screw it into the wall at home because I have my own um, sewing room that's a dedicated sewing room and it's really handy to be able to stick up on the wall all kinds of different pieces and be able to really get a good distance look at what I'm making because looking at this from farther away makes a ton of difference. So if you're lucky enough to do that, take advantage of that. If I just rotate these pieces, once again I have something else that's very different. And I brought in some other things to add to this. Each time you've got something different going on the big trouble is you eventually have to make a decision and get, get something sewn, not just play with all the pieces. So that's a couple of the things to do building on the idea of a double nine patch. There are certainly other things that you can do with your little nine patches. Let me see what I have over here next. Um, this is called a sister's choice block. And I started this by drawing it in my book. And like I said, I like to keep my designs together in the book so I don't lose those pieces of paper. 
This is what I drew so that I could figure out what size pieces I needed to cut to make this block. And once again, this is three inch finished block. So this rectangle, I'm doing this as a rectangle with the stitch and flip corners on it again. The rectangle finished measures one by three, so the cut size will be one and a half by three and a half. The little um, square that I'm going to cut to do the stitch and flip triangle, I'm measuring it so I make sure I get it right, um, was one inch finished, so I'm going to cut one and a half inch squares to be able to do the stitch and flip. Sometimes you don't want to draw the whole size, the actual size of the piece you're going to make. And once you get used to doing this kind of work on the graph paper, you can just draw it really little like this and change the sizes. If I did something like this, I would write myself a note. Okay, I want to make this larger. I want to make each of those squares represent two inches. And then I'll be able to figure out what size to cut everything. And if I have something that's a really weird size, like this block, I pulled this out of my closet to see what else I had made with nine patches. I'll put this to the side right now. Well, this silly thing, these squares are one and three-fourths inches finished. That's not math I'm going to do in my head, just because I know I can't. So to figure out what size rectangle I need right here, if this is one and three-fourths inches finished, I need to multiply that by three. This finished piece will be five and a quarter inches. So I need to cut it, okay, two dimensions, <laughs> five and a quarter by one and three-fourths inches finished. So I need to add a half an inch to each of those dimensions to figure out what size to cut the base square. This, once again, is a block that you can alter. What if you made the half square triangles? Once again, this is one and three-fourths inches finished, 0.75, and I'm going to add seven-eighths of an inch to that, which is point. 875. Okay, let's make that simpler. 7 eighths of an inch is 7 divided by 8. So you can just do that on calculator. 7 divided by 8 equals 8.75, just like I said. And now I'm going to add the other number, plus 1.75. So the square I need to cut to do this half square triangle is 2 and 5 eighths of an inch slice it in half diagonally, sew it together. Well, these can really alter the block a lot. If I put it this way, I've made a different shape here. Same thing if I do it here. What if I want to move those into the center and just make the nine patch be different? That's another block. <laughs> Rotate them. This goes on and on, doesn't it? So this to me is what, what makes quilting so fun and, ex and exciting is little simple changes can make a huge difference in the way that something looks. Uh, let's see what else I had here. Um, I wanted to show you a sawtooth star starting with a nine patch. There's my, once again, three inch, inch finished nine patch. And on this page, I drew a simple sawtooth star. The rectangle I need for that is three inches, one and a half inches by three inches finished. So it needs to be cut two inches by three and a half inches. The stitch and flip corners will be one and a half inches finished, so I'm gonna cut them two inches. Same technique to stitch and flip. Let me put this a little closer. And here's what I ended up with for my Satu star. Obviously I have a stack of things over here, so you bet you know, bet you know I'm going to play with those again too. There's a basic Satu star. Put in these as corners. Whoops, right side up would be helpful. And just like everything else, if you shift 
the position of things, you get a different block. Well, what if I wanted this to have light corners or light points on it? That gives me a different block too. And now since I already have these things made, let me see what happens if I stick those on there. I've got a block that's growing and has a completely different shape now. And if I were going to make this an entire block, I have a three inch finished square to fill in right here. So I can go back to some of these pieces I had before. Maybe the colors aren't exactly what you do, but you can get the idea. I'm going to put these to the side right now. And here we are with half square triangles in here. What if I want to switch those out and add a different fabric? I kind of like that a little bit better. It gives it a little bit more pizzazz. Oops. <laughs> Get that in the right way. Um, well, what if I wanted to change this out? I made these little half square triangles and I'm just placing them on top of here. But if I were going to actually sew this, these darker red pieces would be cut as half square triangles too. And you can just draw that on your graph paper and figure out what size they need to be. Every little change in here can make a big difference in how your quilt looks. Swap them. Swap these. And these are all just the very same units. Simple, simple math, simple stitching. It's the change of fabrics that make a difference and the change in the values. The values being the darks or the lights. Um, if I put a dark corner on there, then that coral stands out a little bit better. I'm not going to do too much more of this because I think you're getting the idea and I'm hoping you're wanting to run to your own fabric stash and get started on some of this. One more of those. Okay. So that's just one of the jillions of things you can do with these nine patches. I'm going to take a quick look in my book and see if there were some other things <clears throat> that maybe will spark ideas for you. Here's my little drawing of the nine patches and the hourglass blocks, which can make an overall pattern. You don't have to do just a block and do something different. Sometimes you get an overall pattern with it. But if you did just a block, like this much of it, you could decide whether you want to add sashing to it or alternate blocks. And here's one I wanted to show you. This is something I just drew on here to see what it would look like. And in this particular design, the nine patches are not in a block, but they're in the sashing. And I sewed a little bit of that so you can see what that looks like. Here's my sample of how I did it. I'll show you that in a second. Get rid of all that. Bear with me while I set this up because I think as I lay these pieces out, you'll begin to see how this was, that, how the nine patches are built into the, the nine patches are in the sashing. They're not in the block. I didn't design a block around the nine patches. The nine patches are in the rows of the sashing. There's really not much of a true block in this quilt. See if I can get this the right way, or at least close enough for you to see what the heck I was doing. This must go this way. Oh, I know, I'll put this one here. That's the trouble when you put something on your design wall and you sew it and then you take it down and you think you can get it back together again. 
Okay, there we go. I think you're seeing this design start to come together. Oh, that one goes up there. All right. Sort of like Laurel and Hardy making a quilt here. Well, it's just Laurel. Um, there we go. This kind of a design would have to be put up on your design wall and taken down bit by bit because the star that appears here is made in three different rows. So you'd either need a design wall or clear your family out of your house and put it all over the floor or put it on your bed and not go to sleep until your quilt's put together. But it's a fun way to work anyway. And just so you know how these star points were made, it's exactly the same method that I showed before, the stitch and flip. Three inch finished nine patch. This square right here is six inches finished, so it's cut six and a half inch inches. <clears throat> this light colored sashing was a complete strip. It was a whole strip like this size, six and a half by three and a half. And those star points were done by stitch and flip. Here's the first one. Whoops, let me move all this out of the way. The first star point, I drew the diagonal line, stitched on the line, flip and press it. You'd want to go in there and trim that away. And then your second star point, the same way. Place it on there, stitch, and flip. And then you come back and trim that away. Simple, simple. Um, sewing, simple math, a wide variety of quilts. I'm going to show you a couple of finished quilts now. Here are a couple of quilts that are made from the same units and pieces that I showed you on the table. This is a nine patch and hourglass. Um, notice that there's a star that appears. See the red points of the star? And as a design that shifts, then you can see the light points of the star. That's one of the things I really love about this particular kind of quilt. This is a six inch finished nine patch. So the hourglass, to cut those pieces, you cut a square, seven and a fourth inches square, and cut, um, slice it diagonally twice to sew those back together for that block. And I'll show you another one. This once again is nine patches and half square triangles. The way these are organized, they make strong diagonal lines. This is a quilt that was given to me by some friends in Tucson. The group got together and made all of these pieces and then a couple of them got together and organized it on, once again, on a design wall or on a big floor to make the light and the dark stripes appear. Six inch finish, nine patches, the half square triangles, six inches finished, so you cut the square, six and seven eighths inches square, slice diagonally one time to, and put the squares together, the triangles together to make that particular block. There were some leftover pieces from that particular quilt. So they were organized in a different way um, around a center. This is called a barn, barn raising setting and it will someday grow larger as I add some more of my pieces to it. And the last quilt I'm going to show you, once again, is those little bitty three inch uh, finished nine patches. This one was placed, all the pieces were placed on my design wall so that I could get the flow of color for the light down to the dark. You'll see the three inch finished nine patch and here's a half square triangle once again, you cut the square, three and seven eighths inches square, slice it diagonally one time, sew those together. The only tricky little part of it is when the bands of color turn in the corner. And right here is one of those pieces. This is a three inch finished bl um, block. So this piece is cut three and seven eighths inches square, sliced diagonally one time, and these little pieces are the quarter square triangles. That's half 
of one of the hourglasses. So to get those pieces to make a three inch finished block, you would cut the squares four and a fourth inches square, slice diagonally twice, and then put those pieces together. I hope that in all of my rambling, I've done, shown you something that will make you excited to go to your stash, get out your fabric and play with it, get some graph paper, and design some really simple, easy to make quilts that are spectacular with the colors that you like.